Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We're going to be joined in the next segment by Jonathan Gray. All the way in New Zealand, we had some uh, airtime problems in connecting to New Zealand last week, and hopefully uh, no problems this week. Looks like everything's going to be perfectly fine. Uh, and one of open lines, actually, if you have any questions on any health issue, geopolitical or spiritual issues, the number to call the studio live anywhere in the world is 800-259-5791. 800-259-5791. We have, of course, the latest reports coming out of Chantilly, Virginia, on the Bilderbergers. They did discuss the Agenda 21 population reduction agenda. We now have the scrambling going on in Europe with a call for a federated FDIC-type uh, plan for the Federal Deposit Insurance-type uh, federation of Europe. A lot of resistance going on. Uh, we have the teetering uh, economy in Spain where it's very likely that they may have, if they don't correct things, a bank run. We have the election of a socialist that doesn't want, that wants, quote, growth instead of austerity. Although Germany is insisting on austerity, they're basically said, Angela Merkel said, do you want to have more Europe or more German money, basically, is her question. In other words, uh, she's pushing for more federalization of Europe. And in fact, people need to go back to the history that East and West Germany were allowed, East Germany was allowed to come out of under the communist rule and to join West Germany if they would accept the euro, which is now 17 nations, uh, uh, if you want to call it accepted currency. Yes, we have a caller, your name and where you're from and what you'd like to talk about. Yes, uh, hello again, Dr. Bill. This is Mark in Oregon. Yes, you're one of our great listeners. You listen to our program and, of course, all the other great programs here on Genesis, including Alex Jones, etc. Uh, tell us what you'd like to talk about today. Well, Dr. Bill, this is uh, more to a spiritual area, and actually the question relates to you personally. Uh, something I've always been curious about um, to really follow up on what you've said several times uh, over the years, and that is that you have a belief which, of course, I'm sure you're aware when I describe the belief as I understand it, you can correct me if I'm not uh, accurate on this. Right. But uh, it does go against the um, the generally accepted uh, interpretation of uh, the Bible, which really in this particular verse is that describe this this area and what uh-huh. I'm speaking of and that, that you've spoken of. Mm. Right. It has right. to do with the the thousand-year millennial reign of Christ. Right, okay. Now, do what you, happens is... Uh, yeah, I'll, let me I'll, just I'll, finish the, the sure, other I, part. Yeah, and, that's good. I, I'm, I'm glad we're on focus on that because that's important, and it ties in with other other keys that I'm going to re-release in Clay and Iron when it's released this fall, Okay. which I released 13 years ago, and I got 24 years ago face down the concrete in my basement, supernaturally dictated to me that these are essential because there's a lot of... I call heretical truths that are putting the church literally in great danger. And some of these are, are, are ones that people don't understand how they'll put them in danger, but they will. Dr. Bill, if we look at the literal literal uh, meaning of the words which describe that kingdom and, and the book of Revelation, we would, if not, not agreeing with that, we would, as being just a literal interpretation, then then we would have to actually rewrite the future, as most people understand it, that are actually uh, born-again Christians, because well, most of the people in the world actually follow that, that scripture literally. Well, well, just think of it this way. Uh, one thing I'm really good at is mathematics, okay? And I'm just going to pretend we're in the classroom now, and I say there's a series of corollaries. And corollary 1, corollary 2. And remember now, in mathematics, as in science, if two thin concepts are in direct conflict you then have to resolve that and just call it mathematical proving. Yes. And if you've ever, ever done any advanced math... Or geometry. Or proving, yeah, or proving, which is an advanced process of actually going through a series of corollaries to develop new mathematical theories of, you know, infinite number sets or uh, quaternary mathematics or, you know, any kind of principles. Yeah. Now, let's put it this way. In the book of Daniel and all through the Bible, it says that the stone cut out with those hands, which everybody agrees is the stone of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father in the flesh, which is the God creator of the entire universe, who incarnated in human flesh as an infant in, in, in Bethlehem, 
yeah. who came among us, his name was Yahashua, which means the breath, the Yah, the breath that is among us, or Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's his actual name, Emmanuel. His yeah. name is Yahashua, Jesus, is actually a shortening of Yahashua, which means the breath who is incarnated into flesh. Yes, sir. Okay? Everybody knew that. That's why even the name of Joshua, uh, who is the friend of Caleb, you know, they were the two, Joshua and Caleb were the two adults which were following uh, the command under Moses, that right. adhered and didn't grumble. Joshua was a foretelling of the name of the actual incarnation of the Creator. Interesting. It says, in Daniel, and the stone cut out with those hands would strike the statue that was made of clay and iron, the, the the thighs and the belly were made of of iron and the and the chest of, of silver and the head the chest and arms of silver and the head of gold. Yeah. And it would be broken into pieces and it would never come back. Now, throughout the, the Bible and Jesus said when this event happens, there shall be no more sorrow, no more tears, there shall be no more sorrow. And there should be no more of any of these things. That's the Antichrist kingdom actually being torn apart. Yeah, but it's also, the devil's not given a second chance. It says, in, it says in the book of Revelation, and the false prophet and the beast dictator, and remember there, there's not a, quote, Antichrist. It's another false lie. There's not the, anything that other than, quote, Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, in the incarnation, is the spirit of Antichrist. In other words, anything that's doesn't agree with the Bible says. Well, I, I find that to be true, but also at the same time, I think that we're, we're given the, the actual information of an actual human incarnation of Satan that will be a global rule, and I, I, I really see that forming up all around. Well, I, I, I'll explain it more in, uh, if you'd like to on that, too, but here, here's yeah. the situation. That kingdom will be blown away, it says in Daniel, and shows in many other places in the Old Testament, in, as well as the New, and it will never rise again. Now, at the moment that Jesus died and was raised from the dead, and he said he speaks to, spoke to the spirits in prison, Tardis. Yes. And they were released from that prison into the kingdom of God or into judgment. Okay. At that moment, the kingdom of Yeshua, the kingdom of Jesus, existed. Which is why even through the apostate early church, which had some bad beliefs, but had, were all trying to follow Jesus as best we could, like little children trying to clean up the edge of the garage, yeah. And God did miracles, even through the Catholic Church and through other churches, the Greek Orthodox Church, because God looked down and said, "Look, they're trying to, they're trying to sh to understand my love for them, and they're trying to reciprocate with love for me. I'm going to do miraculous things for them." So, in other words, we have ruled and reigned not just for one period of grace, a thousand years, but for two. So God has doubled the grace. So we have already ruled and raised as king and priest, but we haven't operated in that. And a good example is the Christian church. We've had, we've had Steve Dace and Greg Jackson on. Now, the Christians, and I speak about this because since the last 13 years, <clears throat> since I went to Prophecy Club, and 12 years ago I spoke of the Church in Living Waters in, outside of us in St. Paul, Minnesota, I have not been invited to one church or gathering anywhere on earth. And every day, there's probably five to six million people listen live or on rebroadcast to this program, plus they do an hour or two on rents every week. Not one, because when they do call, if they ask, I tell them what I'm going to do. First off, I don't come under their authority as a, uh, w of their church pastorate. I come under the authority of the Most High God. I come as an office, not as Dr. Deagle, who's a good doctor, but... The best doctor, best physician is the Creator God who's given me a gift of medical discernment, which is why he gave me the discernment to tell him back in the early part of this year when I got a call from Bob Chapman that, Bob, what's wrong? And he said, I don't feel well. He said, so what are the symptoms? I said, well, God's given me this gift. I said, and I'm going to ask you a whole series of questions. I said, what I discern is that you have pancreatic cancer and a secondary in your liver and you need to get a CT scan tomorrow. Now, that was given not by a good doctor. That was by the Creator God. And I'm going to tell you right now, there is no millennium because when God strikes the stone cut out with those hands, strikes the statue, there is no rising. We have already ruled and reigned for 2,000 years, and the devil will no longer rise with evil on this earth or anywhere else. Back in a moment.
Welcome back, and we have Jonathan Gray. I guess we had technical problems last week, and uh, today I guess we caught you in early in your breakfast, uh, Jonathan. It's great yeah, to have you. Right. Uh, I'm always happy to speak with you, Dr. Bill. Great. Right, listen, we're on the first and third. Um, we're on the first and third uh, Tuesdays of the month, and I guess we'll hopefully be good a week after next on the nineteenth. Uh, yep. On the nineteenth. Yep, nineteenth. I'll make sure it's pencil in there. We had an interesting question from one of our great listeners. Uh, Mark up in Oregon. He's actually was raised Jewish. I know him quite well now after talking to him many, many times. Very, very intelligent man. And he's a believer, a Christian now. But like much of the Christian church, it's been led astray by all kinds of heresies and false beliefs that are based not even on, you know, there's a thing called cognitive dissonance. If you do believe two things that are in direct conflict and are not logical, one of them's got to be wrong, or you have to reinterpret your perspective of what you're looking at. Oh, one so of those, that, that, that's for certain years. And one of the things that's, uh, one of the many keys that I was given 24 years ago, face down on the concrete, translated and given directly to me by the Most High God was, there is no future millennium. We are already at the end of the double grace God's given to earth, which is a millennial reign. We reign right now, and we pray to God, and we ask for God's blessing, say, to America or to New Zealand or any country. When we pray and get discernment, like I mentioned about Bob Chapman, giving the discernment of what his illness was and what he needed to do, when God gives instant healing, we are already ruling and reigning. The problem why evil exists is because Christians, number one, it's like having a $10 billion check and God's reaching out with his hand and we're not willing to take the check because we don't believe he's there. We don't take our scepter and rule and reign with the Most High God. That's our problem. We've already had 2,000 years of ruling and reigning. When evil is cut off, it will never rise again. There won't be a 1,000 years and then we'll have this horrific... And you can just imagine what kind of technology we have a 1,000 years from now. A thousand years from now, mankind will have spread across the stars and the galaxy. We wouldn't just have a war on one little planet on a yellow dwarf star. We'd have tens of thousands of worlds at war. We would have galactic and cosmic destruction on a scale that's just beyond belief. So no, God is going to deal with mankind here on this earth before we go any further. And he's going to deal with evil once and for all. And when the time of Jacob's trouble is finished, it's over. The time of the rest isn't just a seventh day that lasts a thousand years. It's a seventh day that lasts forever. Because time as we know it, lineal time ends and eternal time starts. That's what the real issue is. Eternal time starts, which is a rest in the Most High God, not just for another week where evil rises again, but forever. What's your comment on that? Yes, I, I do agree with you. Uh, this, this theory of a thousand years reign uh, on the earth from Jerusalem is, uh, has very suspect origins. And as a historian, as well as an uh, archaeologist, I found it my duty to help people with the same, same difficulty, which has swept through the Christian world. And uh, it's one of the biggest hoaxes of our day that uh, there's going to be a thousand years of rule from Jerusalem. That all started, by the way, if you're a high-level Mason... Because I understand the Masonic issues at a very high level. As a minister to 93rd degree Masons like Bill Schneblin, uh, the origins of the thousand year reign arose at the time of the 700 plus wives of Solomon, which is interesting. His name is called Solomon, or, or the, in a sense, the rising of the sun god. That's a symbol, by the way, the rising sun of Mr. None other than the abomination that shall desolate. And uh, Solomon's reign is when they actually talked about this millennial reign. It was passed through the Masonic orders. And every Masonic order on earth replicates these symbology and these symbols like the Star of Ashtarte we've talked about before, which we call the Star of David. It wasn't the Star of David. It was the Star of a blood sacrifice. This millennial reign is entirely Masonic. It's demonic. It's satanic. It has nothing to do with the reign of Jesus Christ, which will be forever. And he first has to reign in our hearts before he will manifest on our world. That's absolutely right. And unless we have him reigning in our hearts, which is the kingdom of grace, we can never participate in the kingdom of glory that's coming. Right. And by the way, the decisions God said, I shall bind together those tares 
and remove them. In other words, the rapture is not the rapture of the good. It's the tie binding together of the evil. Just look at the policies of the evil. Agenda 21, deep underground hotels like Revelation 6, they, they shall hide themselves in the deep places and rocks and crevices of the earth. Off-world space platforms, advanced monetary systems, advanced genetic engineering and other technologies try to save themselves from the destruction coming. But guess what? Our God is God. And we're not going to have to put up with this in the future. Mankind and our descendants, as it says in the book of Isaiah, in the very first scriptures that Jesus read, was Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20 to 22. And if you go to those verses, God said, not conditionally, a thousand years or whatever, that you will plant a tree or build a home and you will live in it and you will live as the years of, of, of the patriarchs. Literally, as, the, as someone dies in a hundred years, it will be the years of a child. We're not going to have a future war. Man, war is obsolete. In fact, the problem with mankind right now is we don't even believe it's obsolete when really, if we start a global war now, there won't be anything but cockroaches and bacteria left, if they can survive. So this idea that mankind can survive even the wars that we can promulgate is insane. So without the intervention of the Creator God, mankind has no future, and a thousand years from now would be even more horrendous and more destructive. So. We need to dispense with this foolishness. And the problem with the the problem is the modern church is is like the the the, the, the Jews, which literally decided to say, well, we'll take our scribes and our Pharisees and our Pharisaical uh, interpretations through Rambam and all these other Jewish sages, and we'll make our calculations as to what we think God really means. Rather than, and that's why you have all these different schools of prophetic study and this and that. Well. I say to those out there that speak prophetically or interpret the scriptures incorrectly, God is a God of simplicity and a God of order, not disorder. And that's why if you have a logical mind like you do, you look at this and you say, if God said this, that the kingdom shall be destroyed and never rise again in Daniel and elsewhere throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, who's to say there's a thousand year reign and then Satan rises again to destroy most of mankind? Well, how does this compute? It doesn't. It doesn't compute. Therefore, it's a lie. Well, um, uh, you're certainly along the right, the wrong, the right track, there, Doctor Bill. Um, from my own independent uh, research, uh, I can trace this uh, thousand-year reign uh, on Earth uh, to people who have no good in their minds for mankind. Exactly. And, and what they're what they're trying to say is, if the devil's lullaby, you don't have to put off. You can put off your salvation till then, because that's when you're going to have your second chance if you mess it up now. Well, today is the day of salvation. Exactly. In fact, you don't know. Uh, you don't know when God's going to call you. Like his uh, his parable to uh, Nicodemus, talking about the man who built barns and was wondering about his great fields and his great harvest, and he wasn't going to build extra barns. And he said he did not know that night his spirit would be required of him. In other words, he's going to die. He didn't know that his world was going to end. He didn't know there was going to be a bank run and the martial law. He didn't know that Fukushima was going to blow up and there were going to be radioactive food. He didn't know that there would be disaster. Well, guess what? I stand here today to tell you silence to those who don't understand and we want to bring simplicity because our God loves us and he doesn't bring a spirit of confusion or disorder of 10,000 different denominations that all believe their own little heretical lies when we need to hear the truth. Welcome back, and uh, yeah, that's a good way to start off the program. Let's get into your book, uh, The Forbidden Secret, now, uh, Jonathan, because, you know, what people need to understand the program, because they say, well, I can't understand all these different topics. We'll talk about anti-aging, life extension. We'll talk about geopolitics, and we'll get into religion. When I speak, there's three classes of information I'm going to talk about, and when I bring on top experts, and I believe you have an apostolic calling, uh, Jonathan, I really do, and that is thus saith the Lord. That the reason is you're providing information that says close up and seal the words of the book till the time of the end. And you're opening up books, you're opening up archaeological findings, you're opening up understandings that'll sweep away the rags and the filth of of what I call apostasy. We have lived under accumulating 
sickening apostasy over 2,000 years. It started with the apostasy of Constantinople taking over the, 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 the way, which is the Christian church, and making it the state church of Rome. And accumulated apostasy passed on through the so-called Christian Protestant churches that didn't get rid of all the filth that was absorbed during the times of the Roman days. Just like the Jews in 1600 years of uh, apostasy in Babylon accumulated all the demonic apostasy of the Babylonian uh, warlocks and Satanists. And they now call themselves the Pharisaical Jews. Many of them branched off to become the world bankers, the control of media. They are literally the modern day Pharisees. And the modern Christians, by and large, don't know the love of the Most High God because if they knew God personally, if they knew His love, they wouldn't even come up with this bizarre eschatology that's not based on the love of God. Yeah, uh, that, that's what he was, love, L-O-V-E, and, and that's what brought me into it to follow him. Nothing exactly. Else. I, that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what drives me. That's what drives me is a love of God. People say, is it love of your family? Is it love of mankind? No. My love is God first. Mankind comes after that, and guess what? Only The only way you can truly love mankind and your family is if you love God first. You can't even love your wife or your family or humanity properly and in a godly way unless you love the Creator above all else. And, Dr. Bill, that love means that we can't keep quiet about His love because we want everyone to know it and experience it. Right, and once they do, by the way, they won't come up with foolish eschatology. And that's why it silences pastors, because they say, I'm going to ask you a series of questions, you and your deacons board. I said, I don't come here as Mr. Nice Guy. I come here with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing that is not earned by going to your school, the prophets in Colorado Springs, or by going through a specific ministry or training. I went to the training of the fire of the Most High God. I have a love of God. I was a creator, a firsthand, I call it, ghost encounters of the highest kind. And I'm not going to be silenced. I'm not going to be silenced, and people need to know that we're at the so close we have to have that love because we're entering into that brick chamber like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego where the fires of tribulation are going to enclose on mankind. And it's like Jesus said, in that day shall they grab the seat seats or the prayer shawl and the little purple tassels of the priest or the prophet is asked to speak in that day and give the truth to the people. And they will cry out, please tell us what's next, what is happening to our world. It's, it says in Luke 21, Men's hearts will fail for fear of what is coming on the earth. Well, guess what? No matter what's coming on the earth, no matter what's coming in your life financially, if you've got cancer or heart disease or you've lost your son or wife or something horrible is happening, you lost your job, the world is radioactive, our God is God, and he's still on the throne, and he's not nervous. And he'll provide a way for us. There are simple things we can do, our friends can do, we can pray. But what we can be and what God is, is always sufficient. And we will not be crushed again by the boot of Satan and his minions on earth like Obama and George Soros. We need to pray for these leaders, by the way. Their boots are on their, our neck because we won't pray for them. How many people out there, put your hands up, are praying for these monsters like Hitler, Rotten Clinton, who went through centuries of being cursed by your ancestors, uh, down to the centuries, cursing their descendants like Hillary Clinton, cursing Obama, uh, their ancestors, doing blood rituals, human sexual magic rituals, and so on, to curse and have these transdimensional dark energy matter monstrosity beings avatar our leaders to crush mankind, to hide technology from us, to hide the truth from us, to infiltrate our churches, to infiltrate our educational institutions, to crush mankind in the spirit which makes us literally the sons and daughters of the creator of the universe. So we've already been given the opportunity by the creator to rule and reign, and we don't even think we've had it. That's really disturbing, because if God died for us, and he gave us immediately the authority and the scepter, why don't we operate in it? Because we don't believe it. And people don't want to hear that. They don't truly believe that Jesus died for them and gave them that power, but he has. And that happened 2,000 years ago. Pretty amazing, isn't it? They don't have the love of God. So by their very questions... They show they don't have the true love of the Most High God. They don't understand it. Yep. Disturbing, isn't uh, it? it once, once you understand that love, everything starts to fall into place. Including science, technology, everything. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. If you understand the love of Jesus, the Father of the flesh, whether it's astrophysics, <clears throat> subatomic particle physics, mathematics, medicine, 
that love will transform you into an agent, a literally a son or daughter of the Most High God. It will transform your will to be fused with his will, and you go from being a mortal physical being, an immortal soul that has a limit in the, if you want to call it, the dual sphere of the intelligence of the universe, which is mortal, which is, has an end, into an eternal being that literally has no end. That's why it talks about the Melchizedek. When you rise to that level, you become like Melchizedek. Like Jesus said, you will be, he was a forerunner. He said, when I return, you shall be as I am, and even greater things in the Father's name you shall do. He's literally talking to us. He's saying, you're going to do some amazing things. You thought what I did was amazing, walking on water and curing people? Wait till you see what you'll do when you actually grasp the scepter I've given you when I die as the Most High God incarnate in flesh and hand it over to you, my children. That's what he's saying. Amazing, isn't it? it? It's really, truly wonderful. And you know, it, it, I often have heard it said, this is simply wonderful, and I'd like to add to that, it's wonderfully simple too. Yeah, it's not complicated. And when you see the simplicity of God, my little daughter with Down syndrome is 19 now. When she was just little, I mean, she couldn't even walk yet. And we know her spirit's much more advanced than her mind. And the first prayer she said was about a year and a half old, and she was just barely able to start walking. And she says... Jesus, God, you see Mommy, you see Daddy, you see Matthew, his older brother, you see Stephen, you see Christopher, you see Kelsey. That was her prayer before we had dinner. So and she did, we never taught her that. She just literally sat there and God literally told her, and this is what she said. I think I sat there, my hair was like up on ends, and I think, oh my gosh, this is the kind of God that can take a little girl that they try to persecute me to try to abort. She survived two heart surgeries, and I was visited supernaturally that she was going to make it anyway. And she just tells us that God sees us. Mm. Through the mouth of a little child. That is really uh, very humbling. Beautiful. Very yeah. humbling. And that's and why humbling. it should humble all of us, even if you think, oh, well, Deagle's real smart. Look, I'm smart. Smarter than most. You know, as I say, I'm average, but a lot of people are smart as a bucket of rocks. But the brilliance of God outshines everyone that ever was or will be. And when you understand that, he makes you a son or daughter of the Most High. That's why when I pray with someone and they can tell, call, them, call me or anywhere in the world and I tell them, not only from their questions, but I discern exactly what's wrong with them, like Bob Chapman, I told me he had pancreatic cancer. These things happen to me every day. For 30 years, I've had this gift. And God gave it to me because I asked him for help, and he did. He gave it to me. People need to know it's a sign gift to say, what I'm saying to you today isn't just my opinion. It isn't just a pastor saying, you know, it's a good idea to know about Jesus. Well, the devil knows about Jesus. If you want to know about Jesus, he has to live in your heart which means every thought, every intention has to be in harmony with the Creator, and then you end up becoming a different kind of being. You start living in heaven today, not at the moment of your death. That only becomes self-evident where you are at in the relationship to the Most High. But today you start to live in a heavenly position with the Most High. That's what makes it so different. Whether you're a doctor, an engineer, or a politician, <clears throat> if we had our so-called Christians operate with their scepters today we would have godly presidents who are sons of the most high we have godly politicians and doctors we would never have abortion we would have life extension and we would never have war Welcome back. Let's get into this chapter now. I know we got into some other topics there, and it's good because, you see, the show's not led by the, the promptings of man, but by the Most High God. That's why we have what I call the Social Gospel Church. It makes you feel all fuzzy warm. I call it Milk and Cookies Church. Well, making Milk and Cookies Church isn't going to get you through the doors of the kingdom of the Most High God. And by the way, the millennial reign starts in your hearts. In fact, there is no millennial reign in rest. Jesus Christ is literally the Lord of everyone, and everyone re rules and reigns, not just after the death of Jesus when he died on the cross, but also today. If every one of our doctors 
was literally like the Hippocratic oath, swore an oath that they understood the sanctity of life from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death. They wouldn't have ethics committee deciding on the death of seniors with Obamacare. We wouldn't have senior, senior uh, judges making decisions about whether or not it's reasonable to have what we call gay and lesbian families and have adoption of children that will have no idea about what their sexual orientation is normally or gay and lesbian parents already starting sex changes in their children at three or four years of age. We wouldn't be aborting babies in the utero, and we wouldn't be doing weird experiments creating chimeric monstrosities like the U.S. Super Soldier Program that Dr. Poindexter kind of leaked out a bit about, you wouldn't, which you'll hear more on this program that I know firsthand, not secondhand. You would have these abominations if people were actually believers. And that's why I want to know where the heck the Laodicean church is. Out there, all these we call trappings of horror, I'm here to blast it away with the flamethrower of the Most High God to say, it's time to get rid of this garbage because the Creator God is coming and the time of Jacob's trouble is coming not just for Israel but for the whole church and for his family. And the judgment starts on the house of the Lord. As God says, are we ready? Do we have our, our, our wedding clothes ready? No. We don't even know the Most High God's love. We don't understand His plan. We don't understand the simplest things. And the eschatology is so confused. There's 10,000 ranked denominations in America and cults like Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Muslims, which are another cult that fed off of, Christ, of the apostate Christianity and apostate Judaism and formed its own horrifying global transnational cult. And you know why? Because they don't know the love of God. The love of God would get rid of all of this. But they don't know it. They don't know it. Yeah. The, the love of God w w in people's hearts would prevent them even considering such options. Right. They would know that our... You know, as I was saying on the break, you know, if you think Satan's a bad guy, he's a badass, well, wait till you see God on a bad day. I mean, their idea of God, I mean, if this is their idea of God, I don't think heaven's going to be a heavenly place to go to. Let me tell you, my creator God is capable of only one thing, infinite love. He is not capable of evil. He is not capable of destruction. He is not capable... He, he gives us free will. We don't get thrown into hell. We jump into it. We separate ourselves from the Creator. That's why our world is in such a mess. That's why we use depleted uranium, which not only affects our troops, but we salt foreign nations. And when they have giant dust clouds that spread across the Middle East to Africa and they cause birth defects in African women, those women are affected by dust clouds that carry thousands of miles where the DU displaces their DNA, affects the hexose monophosphate shunt, causes chromium and vanadium and molybdenum destruction, Right down to the atomic level is a curse to the people and to their offspring because we we won't speak up for it. And if we, the church, were the church, none of this horror would happen. We wouldn't have a dialogue between Obama on one side where Christians say they voted for him because they didn't like George Bush, and Christians are about to vote for Mitt Romney, even though he's a Mormon that's gone to the temple and set a ceremony before someone to play acts of Satan. And we think this is okay, and we have Christian ministries and universities that have railed against Mormonism in their own educational studies, and yet they say, well, we can compromise a little bit. Well, guess what? Guess what? You can't. You can't. That's why you know, today even I saw Rand Paul. He sent me an email. I support Rand Paul. If Rand Paul was running for president, I'd support him. Not Ron Paul, because Ron Paul believes in the state's rights. Tom Hoffling, I support him. Because he is 100% a Christian true believer. That means the, the sanctity of life is that important that mankind must protect the unborn. If you think it's a secondary issue, think about it this way. A generation from now, if we go down the satanic pathway, and let's say there is no salvation, there's no Jesus Christ coming back in our hearts and our kingdom uh, rising, mankind will be reproducing in a laboratory, and there will be various subspecies and superspecies of mankind, and most of the population will be dead. That's where we're headed. It's a dark future. The future is a very dark place without Jesus. Very dark indeed. Absolutely. Uh, you, know, you know what won me, Bill, uh, his death. Uh, his death answered the question as to whether the Creator had sufficient love for mankind to exercise self-denial and a spirit of sacrifice so that we could be saved. And by the way, when he does that, he's asking us to take our life, which is our blood, and join it to his blood. 
It's like soap and water. The blood and sacrifice of Jesus is like the soap, but without the water of repentance and our actions, that soap can do no good for us. None. Yeah. The water of people, repentance. People, people often look at the, the harm and, and, and evil in the world and the suffering in the world, and they blame God. It's only because the soap has not been applied. There's a lot of dirty children out in the street. That, well, I hear that people the that say, work, it just one, of the most, applied. one of the most disgusting things I hear is people say, Oh, Dr. Deagle, you're so wonderful. I say, you know what? You're making me nauseated. You know why? Because it's an excuse that you don't have to do anything. It says in the book of Habakkuk, let he who reads this on tables of stone run with it. Pick up any issue. I don't care if it's fluoridation, water, stopping vaccines, smart meters. Just let the Spirit of God lead you. Go to your church and say, how many women in your church have even had post-abortion counseling? How many men are, are involved with Masonic orders? How many of the deacons board are actually gone to a Masonic you know, funeral ceremony? How many of your pastors believe in heretical doctrines and teach them in your church and you don't confront him? Why? Or her? Why? I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. I get frustrated because I, when I hear these questions, it just tells me that people don't know the love of the Most High. And at the times we're moving into, if you just, let's say, you are a, a supercomputer, okay? And you're just moving forward and you're just calculating you know, the timeline we're on. If you just didn't include God, you didn't include anything, we're headed for annihilation as a species. We're headed for the end of humanity. We're headed for the end of our civilization. It was is not decades away, but years away. Well, as Jesus himself said, he said, unless uh, he intervened and cut short these days, there would no one be left. But for the elect's sake, these days will be shortened. Right. So let's get into this next chapter in the waiting couple of minutes. And then we need, we have, good thing we're going to have you head back on soon in two weeks because we, you know, uh, let the Spirit of the Most High lead us and not chapters in a book. But let's talk about what's in this chapter, this next chapter you want to talk about. Okay. And, and we'll get into it next, uh, on our next yeah. time together. Yeah, just do an intro so we'll go into it next time. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we've all heard of the expression modus operandi, and that's a term understood by police detectives who are tracking down a serial killer. Right. And to identify the guilty, they will assemble clues which indicate a pattern of behaviour. And this procedure often helps them to identify their man. Now, uh, in um, our next broadcast, we'll get into this because there's a confirmed connection of, a, of modus operandi between UFO, uh, so-called UFO occupants, uh, so-called ETs, extraterrestrials, right. conversing with men, and the various experiences that are associated with modern Satanism and the occult. The modus operandi is exactly the same, and they point to the same fingerprint of uh, Lucifer himself. And these big producers in Hollywood believe all this claptrap that we're going to be uh, saved by Andromedans or Pleiadians or the Nibirans or whoever out there, and uh, they don't really realize that what they're dealing is they're de literally summoning transdimensional dark energy uh, demonic entities to literally crush mankind. It says, woe to you earth and you see, for the devil and his angels, minions, have come down to you, and great is his wrath for you, for he knows his days are short. That's what we're facing and they're getting ready to gather the nations towards what's called in Revelation Armageddon. That the, the leaders are, are being put into position who are going to do this work. Well, we, we know Obama's even put off our Armageddon. Control. Yeah, and we have Obama putting off Armageddon until after the election because Obama wants to be the man to actually sign the rebuilding of the temple, the, the scroll of Bush given to him, passed on to Obama now, or to the next fool if it's uh, Mitt Romney to fulfill the White Horse prophecy. Either way, we've got Tweedledee and Tweedledum to decide which demonic so-called president do we want to elect or select from the list that the Satanists have given us rather than selecting a president that represents the Most High God. It's not our job to be elect a president. It's our job to be faithful. Yeah, that's it. And if we understand God's love, then that's a motivating force that will give us the power to become faithful. And we have to realize the times we're moving in, without the faith of God, we have no power. Without that power, we have no protection. And without the protection, we will be swept away. Updates in Hour 2 tonight. Again, beforeus.com is the website. B-E-F-O-R-E-U-S.com. Hour 2 tonight on rents. Multiple updates. Don't